Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TrottenFeather.com and yes, you read that title correct. In this video, we're going to be tying the mop fly. Stay tuned. Here is a quick sneak peek of a finished mop fly. There's really not much to this pattern. You can see we have our mop material, a little bit of dubbing. We have a bead, there's some wire underneath, and a hook. This is a really simple fly to tie, and I know all of you are just waiting to see me tie this pattern, so let me get a clean hook in the vise, and we'll start tying this. Let's start tying this mop fly in my Stonfo Transformer vise. I have a Honic competition hook. It's the H450BL in a size 10. That BL designation stands for barbless. This is a jig hook, as you can see, and if you haven't used these Honic hooks yet, I definitely recommend that you check them out. I am now really excited and just honored to be featuring these Honic hooks in my fly tying tutorials. With the hook, I have it paired uh, with a three and a half millimeter silver tungsten bead. This is one of those disco beads. I really like the look of these. That three and a half millimeter may seem a size just over what you would typically tie on this size hook, but I really like that oversized bead a bit just to get this fly down in the water column. I've also put around 10 to 12 wraps of .010 wire. And then the next thing that I did involved the mop material. Now I'll talk a little bit more about this during the discussion component of the video. This is material and where you can find it. But once I have it cut off of that piece, the first thing I do is just take my, my fingernail of my thumb and I just start to strip away some of the fibers until I expose some of that string that's holding all of those mop fibers together. Once I start to expose that, I grab my hook and I place it within the mop about a quarter to an eighth of an inch. And that's where we are in the video right now. I want to be honest with you, I was preparing for this video and I had this mop material tied on about 20 different ways. The whole way from simply just lashing it to the top of the hook, lashing it up the entire shank of the hook, placing the hook in it nearly the whole way so it would, would really ride down the shank. And trust me, there's really no wrong way to tie this mop material onto the hook. Just get it lashed in properly. And to do that, I'm going to be using some 6 aught uni thread. The color is chartreuse. The reason I'm going with 6 aught is because I want to do my best to cover all of this wire. So once I have this, this thread in place, I'm just going to start wrapping forward. I'm almost going to make touching wraps because I want to do my best to really get all of this wire covered. Now, I don't have to cover it completely. Trust me, that's not a critical part of this pattern but I want to do my best to cover as much as possible. So once I feel that I have the majority of it covered, looks like there's one little section right there. Then I'm going to take this mop material, I'm going to push it forward as far as possible. And when I do I want to do my best to not just lash in some of those mop fibers, but I want to make sure that I have some of those string fibers lashed in place. And if I do, then that mop material is not going to go anywhere. Once I'm sure that I have that lashed securely in place, I'm going to grab some dubbing. Now, I prefer to dub this. Do you have to? No. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But the dubbing that I like to use is this Simon Peacock dubbing. The color is Peacock Black. It just really contrasts nicely with this material. So I'm going to take it and put a healthy amount onto my thread to form a, a little dubbing noodle. I want to get around three wraps of this dubbing around the, the head or the thorax of this fly. Looks like I got maybe four out of it. And once there, I'm just going to immediately go to a whip finish. Be careful with this 6 aught thread, it really builds up quick. Lock it in place. You're going to have these fibers all over the place and now we have our finished mop fly. If you're so inclined, you can even take your dubbing brush. I'm just going to pick out some of this dubbing just a little bit. I'm going to pick it forward 
and then push it back and it's just gonna kind of encapsulate that mop. <laughs> there are so many different things you can do at the front of this. In fact, I saw my buddy, uh, Tim Flagler of Tightline, he actually calls something a mopping glow where he uses this mop and then he puts kind of a glow bug in front of it. If you haven't checked out that video, check out Tim's video, it's another great one. But this is my version of the mop fly. Let me give you a quick 360. And then next, let's change the camera angle and talk a little bit more about this pattern. So, that's the mop fly. Uh, you can see why I definitely will call this a two minute tie, a guide style fly. It's just a fly that is easy to tie and it catches fish. Now, before we go back into that, that fly tying perspective, let's talk a little bit about how this fly came to be. Uh, I see internet reports dating back to 2011 that individuals were fishing this fly, but to my best recollection, I heard about a lot of competition fly fishermen that found out about this fly and they were fishing it and doing very well and they really kept it under wraps because they didn't want that secret out to everybody. Um, then a number of people started fishing these in those one fly contests. They won the contests and that really just kind of popped it and that secret was out. And it's a fly that's just been catching steam recently. As of right now, this is being filmed in the winter of 2016. Uh, this fly is out there. You'll see it on all the social networks. There was an article about it on flyfisherman.com. Um, it's a fly that's here to stay. Now, some people, like myself, it's a, it's, it's a fly. It's one that I definitely embrace and I like to fish. Others, they put in that category with flies such as the green weenie, the sucker spawn, the San Juan worm, maybe the squirmy wormy. It's that fly that you're really unsure about. Should I be fishing this or not? And, and I can tell all of you, um, don't put it with any other fly yet. Tie some of these, fish it, and then get back to me and let me know what you think. But let's talk a little bit about that tying perspective. Uh, there are a few variations that I consider whenever I'm tying this. And for starters, it's the dubbing. I can tell you there's many fly fishermen out there that fish this and all it is is that material. There's no dubbing whatsoever. But you can play around with that dubbing. You can change the color. I tend to like something that contrasts, that if I'm going with a high vis, then maybe I'll go with a dark dubbing and vice versa. Uh, but you can just eliminate that dubbing or try to find some other types of dubbings that are there. The other consideration is that wire. I really like this fly down in the water column, but that's something you can also exclude. It's gonna save some time. Uh, you can fish it just with a bead, tungsten, or a regular brass. Or if you want it higher up in the water column, take off that bead. And I can guarantee you this is a material that will absorb a, a lot of water and it's still gonna get down just a little bit in that water column. Uh, whenever I think about that, the biggest variation, it's going to be the color of the material because there are so many colors out there. And that's probably the trickiest part with this fly. It's, originally, it was just finding the material and trying to figure out what is this stuff. Um, if you do a quick Google search for mop fly, a lot of things will come up, but I can tell you whenever I was first searching for the material, what I wrote in was dust mop slippers. Uh, I found these on Amazon. They cost $2.50 a pair. They shipped directly from China. It took almost three or four weeks for them to arrive. And when they arrived, I showed them to my wife and she immediately said, like, look, those are cleaning slippers. And she put them on and to my amusement, she was walking around and dusting our floor and she was having a really fun old time with my fly tying material. Um, but that's really all they are. Uh, you'll find a bunch of different colors online, but I can tell you, aside from looking in that route, you can go to those big box stores um, and, and look in that cleaning aisle because that's probably where you're, go you're going to find some of these. Uh, I can tell you there's also fly shops that are now carrying them. Performance Flies, which is located in central Pennsylvania, has some colors, I think green, tan, and dark brown, so you can also check them out there. So this is a material that's now out there. Uh, you can find it all over the place. Uh, one of my son Angelo's toys has this all over the back of the toy and uh, every time my buddy Josh comes over I'm afraid he's gonna bring his scissors and start snipping off some of that that color because there are so many colors out there and that's something that you really have to take into consideration with this do you want one of those really just get you obtruse colors similar to the chartreuse or do you want to go with something a little bit more natural like that dark brown or tan and once you get this material um, you'll notice when you start to feel it it's just like a chenille and if you cut a piece off and you get it wet, you'll start to see all those fibers just moving and breathing, which is why it works so well. 
fish see that too, which is why uh, there are so many incredible stories out there about fish nearly attacking this fly or fighting over this fly. And I can tell you from, per from personal experience, I witnessed that. I was fishing uh, for a couple fish and the two of them saw this fly and they both charged it and one took it over the other. And I wouldn't have believed it if, if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, but it really draws that reaction. Are these flies always going to draw that reaction? I have no idea. We'll see if it's a lasting fly and if it's still out there in five years. But I at least wanted to, to bring it to all of your attention. Uh, I'll put some links on where you can find some of these materials in the, in the description of this video. But I'd love to hear from you and, and see if you have any other places where you could recommend everybody look for them. Most importantly though, I'd love to hear from you. And I'd like to know, is this a fly that you're going to tie, you're going to fish, you're going to embrace it? Is it going to be one that you're going to tie and fish, but you're not going to tell anyone about? Or is it going to be one of those flies that you just say, that's not my, my cup of coffee or my cup of tea? So I'd love to hear from all of you in the comments section about this fly. If you also have any other questions or comments, you can email me at tcamisa at gmail.com. Well, I'm going to wrap up this video now, but if you'd like to watch more like this, you can check out my website, which is troutandfeather.com. I also have a Facebook and an Instagram account linked to that page. Uh, for on my Facebook account, I tend to post uh, more informational articles, whereas on the Instagram, it's more fly pictures, fish pics, and some behind the scenes stuff related to these videos. Well, once again, thank you so much for watching this video, everybody. Hope you learned a little bit more about the mop fly, and I'll see all of you next time.